There is a reason to why the ocean is referred to as the silent world. In this world, where sounds are crucial to survival, there is no room or need for foreign sounds to breach its harmony. Sensitivity of various marine animals to ocean noise pollution is varying. While cetaceans like whales and dolphins may show a greater resistance, soft-shell species like mollusks, prawns and fish are much more sensitive. The type of medium determines the speed of sound. On land, sound travels at 350 meters per second. In the ocean, sound travels around five times faster and further. This is the reason that marine creatures rely on hearing much more than other senses such as sight for example. Light can only travel short distances underwater before getting absorbed and scattered. Along with the sediments found in the ocean, this can limit long-range vision. Marine wildlife throughout the years have evolved a perfectly tuned sense of hearing. The sound is relied on to listen, find habitats, navigate, find mates and communicate with each other when hunting or to avoid being hunted. But whilst nature's sounds travel, so does man-made noise. More scientists are discovering that noise not only interferes with an animal's cognitive processing of sounds, but also other types of stimuli such as sight or smell. Boat noise can easily drown out a natural ocean soundscape, making it difficult for fish to communicate. This comes with a variety of negative impacts for marine life, such as causing them stress and changing their behaviour. Unfortunately, there are other noises, such as seismic activity and military sonar. These other types of noise pollution disorientate and confuse marine wildlife by disrupting their communication between each other with the shockwaves and pulses which they produce. This activity can be found all over the world, and the pulses produced travel for hundreds and even thousands of miles. This ends up covering a wide range of the ocean, therefore affecting the marine wildlife from all over. We want to draw attention toward this issue and have had thoughts to reduce and hopefully solve the problem. In areas such as biodiversity hotspots or sensitive habitats, it may be prudent to create rules or laws that minimise the impacts of noise. These laws could include silent zones and speed restrictions, along with the use of low-powered engines and mufflers for boats. Unlike other pollution that enters our oceans, noise pollution is one of the easiest to tackle. Once a noise stops, it's gone. We're not left with detritus that continues to pollute and kill marine life for decades to come, as with plastic, oil and sewage. In terms of manageability, we can do a much better job with solving this problem. And once solved, that's one less crisis to worry about in our oceans. We rely on the ocean for its biodiversity and natural resources. Along with its fundamental role in regulating atmospheric temperatures and gases, it is a very important and delicate place. But with today's seas continuing to face this growing problem, soon it will be unfixable. We wish for a change.